The children of Gaza have three hours a day in which to venture out. The humanitarian ceasefire does not always hold, but it provides some opportunity for Gazans to take stock and to try and find possessions amongst the rubble of their former homes. Behind every flattened building is a tale of sheer terror. I was at Grandpa's house. I heard the shelling and ran away. I saw the house being shelled. The windows broke as well as the door. All of it gone. There is no longer a house. We are the Eunice family, and this is our house that is destroyed. My son was killed, and then our house was destroyed. Six flats were destroyed. All of it from the inside is broken. The ceasefire allows some emergency supplies to be distributed, but because infrastructure is failing, those needs grow greater every day. We all ran out from our houses. We saw the missile and we were impacted. Look at the electricity wires. Look at our windows, all gone, and all children came downstairs and they were screaming and they were very pale. We all scared. The windows were gone. We have no electricity and no gas. As terrifying as this daily danger is, what makes it worse is that there's no escape. There are no bomb shelters and the borders are closed. UNICEF has called for safe spaces to be established until the fighting ends so that supplies can be distributed. But despite the psychological toll the conflict is taking on its most vulnerable residents, they retain the hope that this will soon be over. I wish to live like all children of the world. I wish the war would end and we can go back to school. UNICEF has teams of mental health professionals ready to go into Gaza as soon as possible to begin the enormous task of helping children to cope with the tragedy that has blighted their lives. This is Chris Niles reporting for UNICEF Television. Unite for Children.